Well, welcome back to 42nd Street Pete's Grindhouse, and we did have a request, uh, a bit, if I could find what I'm doing here, which is, oh no, here it is. We had a request for a kick-ass western. After Halloween, you know, we're all horror filmed out, so why not do a kick-ass western? And we really do have a kick-ass western here, if I can open this fucking little thing up here. 1965's Major Dundee. Thing to this thing too here. Um, interesting film. This was Peck and Paw's, I think, third feature, and uh, here is the Arrow Blu-ray set, which basically has two versions. You have the 136 extended cut version that was restored, and you have the 122-minute uh, theatrical version. Now, this all came about because. There was a, you know, a prop, this film, Major Dundee, was going to be about um, a Major Amos Dundee who basically had done something, was regulated to being basically a warden for Confederate prisoners at the tail end of the Civil War. Well, what was going on in that area was uh, a renegade Indian called Sierra Chiriba, played by Michael Pate, was out raiding, and this thing opened up, the film opened up with basically a massacre. A whole settlement was massacred, all the troops were massacred, and they were hanging some bloody trooper headfirst over a campfire before lighting it, and Sierra Chiriba yells, who will you send against me now? And then the credits rolled. Well. What brought this on and how Peckinpah got the job was that um, Charlton Heston and producer Jerry Bresler were watching the last film he did, Ride to High Country, which starred uh, Western legends Joel McRae and Randolph Scott. And after they watched it, Heston said, well, why don't we give him a shot? So, being that Peckinpah had worked TV and was a writer on The Rifleman and had his own series, The Westerner, with Brian Keith, he had come in contact with a lot of these Western character actors. And when he did Ride the High Country, he had the Hammond Brothers, played by James Drury, Warren Oates, L.Q. Jones, and John Davis Chandler. Also a sort of crazy preacher, played by R.G. Armstrong. So, little did anyone know, this would become basically Peckinpah's guys, his stock company, because the only guy that didn't come back from that group for Major Dundee was James Drury. So add Ben Johnson to the mix, uh, Slim Pickens, Dub Taylor, Carl Swenson, uh, Begonia Pelosius, Aurora Carapel, Jim Hutton, Michael Anderson Jr., Brock Peters, and you had the cast of Major Dundee. Um, Lee Marvin was originally tapped to play the pot, part of Potts the One-Armed uh, Indian Scout. But Lee wanted too much money and basically referred James Coburn to the role, who got it. So he was also there. So Richard Harris plays Captain Tyree, who was at odds with Amos Dundee because they were friends and co-officers till something happened and that incident sort of goes back and forth and the two men are at each other's throats. So basically what happens is Dundee wants to go and put an end to Sierra Chiriba. So he gets these Confederate prisoners, and the deal is with Major Tyree that they will stay with him until the Apache is conquered or captured. And then they go their separate ways, but their separate ways might be the two of them killing each other. So it was a rough shoot. Um, basically, they ran over budget. There was a lot of studio interference. Uh, Charlton Heston petition to keep Peckinpah on, saying that he would basically forego his salary if that would work and, you know, keep Peckinpah in the director's seat. He honestly didn't think Columbia would take the deal, but they did, and they took his salary. Um, Peckinpah pissed off so many people on that set and so many actors that basically Charlton Heston charged him on horseback with his saber, and Peckinpah had to use the, the camera uh, thing to get out of the way. Um... Peckinpah got so pissed off that he remarked he'd go out and sleep in the desert, rather sleep with scorpions than sleep with his actors. Um, there was a lot of shit going on there. L.Q. Jones and Ben Johnson related a story saying that they drove by a bar, and Peckinpah said, stop, we got to go in and have a drink, and he went in. 
ordered a mug of beer, sipped it, then spit it back into the bartender's face, yelling, did your cow still piss in this beer? Uh, a huge fight broke out, and L.Q. Jones said that him and Ben were back-to-back -back dodging bottles, knives, and all kinds of shit, and Sam just left. Uh, L.Q. also said that the area they were filming in, uh, people would cut your throat for a dime and give you a nine cents change. So it wasn't the greatest shoot, and also... There was so much surge and crap in the rivers down there that when they shot the river scene, nurses had to basically flush out the actors and stuntmen's ears and noses. So, yeah, uh, like I said, I, I think I said this before, that R.G. Armstrong referred to the film as Moby Dick on horseback. Um, there were no rap party, there were no goodbyes. James Coburn said to Sam as he left the set, goodbye, you rotten motherfucker. And basically, Columbia tinkered with the film and put it out, missing a lot of stuff for a time element. Um, the film is a little bit more than Columbia wanted because there's visible bloodshed, even more in the extended cut because they put stuff in. And um, there's a battle, you know, they basically, they do, after trials and tribulations and a lot of gunplay and other things, they do manage to take out Sierra Chiriba and his band of Apaches. But in order to get home, they have to basically go through a bunch of French lancers who have set themselves up on our side of the Rio Grande. So there's a cannon artillery fire blowing them up, and there's a cavalry charge in the river that's pretty bloody and vicious. And I remember uh, R.G. Armstrong falling face forward with a lance through his back, L.Q. LQ Jones being completely run through and falling in the river, visible blood, and... Um, even though there was animosity between Dundee and Tyree, when one of the Lancers kills the flag bearer, um, Tyree kills him and grabs the flag and goes to hand it to, to Dundee, only to be shot in the back by a guy. And then he takes off across the river, charging into that group of Lancers that are coming in and has sliced to pieces. And then the bloodied remnants of the troops go home. Well... Back in the 60s, it was the late 60s, this thing wound up dumped into the late night TV slot where I saw it. It didn't have, it had a weird score with an electronic fucking thing that kept going, dee 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 dee, boom. And anybody who was around during that time period would remember that that electronic score was used in a bunch of commercials on 60, late 60s radio spots. Um, oddly enough, Mitch Miller also had a song in it, uh, Falling with the Ma Fall in with the Major or something like that. You know, sing along with Mitch and all this other shit. There was another late 60s thing, or early 60s thing, rather. All this was taken out and replaced with a different score for the extended cut, which makes it a little bit more running smooth and more watchable. There's a lot more footage in there, a lot of things that make make a lot more sense, because sometimes people just disappeared because they were killed and, you know, the scene was taken taken out and stuff. So you pretty much get this all back. Um, the film put together is a masterpiece. Um, it's funny how, you know, Major Dundee, The Wild Bunch, Night of the Living Dead, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Fistful of Dollars for a few dollars more, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, and Once Upon a Time in the West, just to name a few, were completely shit on by the critics then. Now, these same critics herald these films as masterpieces. Go figure. Fucking different time and a different place. But Major Dundee is definitely worth a look. Um, definitely a little slice of uh, Peckinpah history. And really, you know, is a good film despite its flaws. Um, problem was that, you know, Sam had just done Ride to High Country, which was a smaller film, and then was given this monster to deal with. And it was just, honestly, probably too much for him. Plus, you know, Sam wasn't the most amicable guy to get along with, but when you think of, you know, he may have pissed everybody off, but the guys that stuck with him through so many films, L.Q. Jones, Ben Johnson, Warren Oates, um, Dub Taylor, uh, I'm trying to think who else, um, R.G. Armstrong. I mean, these guys, you know, and it was like, Sam had a mentality with the studios, it was us against them, and... R.G. was doing an interview before he passed away, and he goes, yeah, we were with Sam. He goes, fuck those guys, you know, what, what the hell, we, you know, we're trying to do something here. And, you know, Sam, for almost all of his career, had to put up with studio interference. But the man is a legend. Unfortunately, he passed away way too soon because of his problems with drugs and alcohol. 
And but what he left is a great legacy of westerns. And like I said, you know, Ride the High Country, Major Dundee, The Wild Bunch, uh, Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid. You know, great, great films. So they're all worth checking out, especially this you know extended cut of Major Dundee. Um, now I got to explain something that I haven't been saying much about. Other, you know, I've been dealing with you know vet bills, my own health problems, but. Last April, my mother, who was 93 at the time, fell and shattered her pelvis. It didn't look good. Um, I had to basically pay somebody to drive me back to Jersey because I can't drive long distance anymore. Um, I thought that was going to be it, but mom is still with us. She turned 94 uh, this April, and basically she's still bedridden. and She's not going to be able to get out of that bed. But... The whole thing was we took a, uh, a reverse mortgage on the house because the house is in New Jersey and basically any house in New, in New Jersey is worth a shitload of money. We took a reverse mortgage to pay for her care in home and hire competent help because we didn't want to stick her in one of these, you know, Medicare places where basically they own your parents. And with the COVID thing, we would have never been able to see her. So... I've been helping out, my sister's been helping out, my brother refuses to help out. Um, we're running out of money to keep her in a good situation, so if you see me selling anything here on Facebook, whatever, just realize that it's not going to help me right now. I'm trying to keep my mother in her house until her time comes because I'm not going to throw her in one of these shitholes and, you know, she's comfortable there, she's well taken care of, she's well fed, and, you know, she's, you know, the care is great, what can I say? Um, I don't bring in that much myself, but I'm doing the best I can to help her out. So again, like I say, if I'm flipping anything or selling anything, that's where the money's going to, uh, seriously. you got to take care of your own and in a world where it seems where there is no empathy, there is no sympathy. I have to do what's best for my mother, my dogs, and I'm on the tail end of that because I come last. So that's the way it is, just wanted to explain that. So if sometimes I see, seem depressed or whatever, I'm dealing with a lot of shit, and I try to keep this going as best I can. So thanks for listening, thanks for tuning in, thanks for subscribing. Above all, stay safe, and really, check this film out. It's fucking great if you haven't seen it. Um, they don't make westerns like this anymore, and they never will. So until next time, stay safe, and we'll catch you on the flip side.